and welcome back to Bill with the Boys. Happy New Year to you all. We now finally have uh, issue 41 of Hatchet's Build the Titanic. In this one, we will be building uh, the uh, boat deck, I believe. We're building, let's have a look, forward boat deck and the bridge. Um, so, having been very engine-centric for the past three months, we're now moving on to superstructure. It looks like we're staying with superstructure for a good while. So, we're going to be using parts of the superstructure we've built before, um new parts that come with this we've been doing some decking we've added some uh, led light into this so we're going to start to see the superstructure build now i know a lot of you are quite eager to get back to the hull but i mean look it, it is what it is i mean this is this is it's essentially two builds is what we're doing uh so the hull if you, you view as one build and the superstructure and the decking as a second build i think we're going to build that then we're going to have a hole that we can add that to it is a nuisance when it comes to storage and things like this because these are going to start to become very large parts the storage is going to be difficult but it is what it is um we will be having our titanic talk at the end of this one we will be discussing edwina or winnie trot um trout who is a it's an amazing story it really is um, so we'll talk all about that. If you haven't yet, please hit the like and the subscribe button. You can see all of Titanic all the way through to the end as we start our second year. This is 2023, so we've done one full year of Titanic, which we start at the very, very uh, last days of 2021 is when we started that one. So it's December 27th, 2021 is when we began. As of today, we're on the 4th of January, 2023. So let's get started. By the end of this year, this thing is going to be huge. It just is. We're already building up quite a lot. But let's get this open, let's get have a look at these parts, let's get into it. Okay, so here we go, again with more sustainable packaging, and they've continued that inside, so this is what we get inside 41. So we've got our piece of deck in there, pop that over there. Uh, what else have we got? Okay, we've got some LED strips, uh, I think. Yep, yeah, LED strips. Anything else in there? Something just fell out, tiny cardboard strip. No idea what that's for. I'm assuming that's just a piece of packaging, but we'll hold on to that just in case it ain't. And then we have this envelope here, which has... Aha! So we have a large piece of superstructure here as well, which is gonna go that way around. Um, and hairs, man, they ain't mine. <laughs> it's just come out of the bag. I don't know whose hairs those are, but they ain't mine. Um, right, so what are the parts that we've got? Okay, so we have the forward boat deck and bridge. That's this one here. We have uh, decking for the bridge. That's this part here. And we have LED lights. These are these two here. So there's not going to be a lot to do in this one. We're going to be fitting some lights, but we are going to need our test board to check these lights work. So let's get into it. Okay, so taking our uh, deck here, uh, having it the correct way up so you can see where the stairwells go down we're going to put an led in here so it's going to put over this tab here i'm going to put one in here now you need to put them the right way round so over this side we are using the one marked m so what's going to happen is placing it so our that's going to be a light that side down so we're going to pop this over this hole here hopefully it should fit. Well, that's really snug. That's probably a good thing. But that's really, really snug. Okay, that one's in. So that holds now. What we're going to do is we're going to tidy the wires underneath these. But before we do that, let's fit in L. We'll just get these wires tied at the same time. So same thing. We're going to take the one marked L. And with your wire facing, with your LED facing downwards. This is going to fit in there. There we go. That's that one in. Uh, now... We're going to tidy the wires, so the wires are going to flow underneath these and then poke through there. This is going to take patience and tweezers. So, tidy your wires along, and then all you need to do is either pry these up ever so slightly, you don't want to break this, as you're pushing your wires down, and we'll tidy them up. So let's get that done, take a look at it. Okay, so it's easy enough, you just 
poke those down into the holes, tuck them underneath, and then once you've got your wires through, I'm going to pop them through this hole here, pull that down, and then we go put it nice and tall. That's how we are, nice and neat. Job done. Happy with that, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to plug these in to test them. So we've got our test board over here now. In my head, these are red and green, but I don't think they are. I actually think they're yellow. Um, I think these are just normal lights. So I think I'm thinking of a completely different set of lights. But we'll see. Uh, so let's... There we go. So a nice little warm glow on that one. So that one works. Happy with that. Let's try this one over here. Put this one around. There's no buttons to push, this should just go on when you pop it in. There we go! There we go. Nice little LED light. Working lovely, that's not very straight, I'll straighten that up. Um, perfect! Okay, let's move on. Okay, so taking our finished assembly, we're going to take a piece of deck in, and the deck in is going to stick over here like so. So that's how we're going to go. It's going to cover our wires up, put all those in place. Um, now, there has been debate about whether to glue or not to glue. Um, yeah, it depends on what area in humidity, really. I mean, because that's what's causing problems for some people. That I haven't had any peeling of my decks. I've, I've been kind of lucky because that's not true for everyone. So I suppose humidity and, and moisture in the air is going to affect it. So... There's no harm in gluing it. If you want to apply some glue to your, your deck just to give the adhesion on this a little bit extra kick, go for it. I mean, you're not you're not going to harm it. You're not. Just don't slather it in glue. But, um, yeah, go for it. Make sure your wires are, are tucked down well because this has got to hold those. It's got to go over those smooth. So we're going to do that. We're going to peel this back in off and we're going to pop this one into place. So, yeah, I mean, look, it's, it's wood, right? And I can feel the, the glue's not magnificent on this. It's wood grain. Use a wood glue. I think you'd be all right, you know. Um, but we'll have a look. We'll have a look at it. So I've put some glue on it just so you can show I'm doing it too. I put a very thin coat of work, clear dry wood glue on here. Uh, Loctite is what I use. If you're curious, Loctite clear dry. I'm just going to pop this one into place. Fantastic. Look at that. That'll be all right. Be careful with your deck in, because it appears to be really bloody flimsy. Look at that, that just fell apart in my hand. Shocking. But that'll be okay. Because it should all just... If it sits where it's supposed to sit, this should be absolutely fine. So we'll sit there. And there we go. There we go. So it's all stuck down. Let it dry. Let the adhesive do its thing. Let it stick. And you'll be good. There we go. So there's our deck on there. Check our edges. See, I'm not happy that the wires are pushing this section up. Which I'm not happy about. So we need to push those wires right down. There we go. There we go, there we go, there we go. Right, good. Done, let's have a chat. So there we are, nice and simple. I mean, really not much to do in that one, but we started on this section. You can see the decking's absolutely fine. It's gone on lovely. Good, happy with it, happy with it. Um, I wish there was more to do. <laughs> I wish there was more to do in that one I really do, because it just, it, you know, we, we wait all this time and then that one's, that one's over. That was a real quick one. Um, but um, but that's it for, for that one. We have got more Superstructure coming up. If you are just stopping by for the instructions, thank you for stopping by. Please remember to like and subscribe. If you're hanging around for our Titanic talk today, we're going to be talking about Edwina Trout, or Winnie, as she was also known. Um, so what do we know about Winnie? Well, quite a lot, because Winnie was one of the eldest survivors of the Titanic. She actually lived until 1984, the ripe old age of 100. Um, so quite a lot. She is one of... The, the last survivors that we were able to get um, a lot of detail from about what happened that night. Um, 
And she was big on the kind of Titanic convention circuit. So there would be Titanic conventions in, in the 70s and 80s. And she was part of it. She was interviewed by pretty much every media company and talk show you could think of in the 70s and early 80s. Um, to hear her story, because her story was remarkable. So um, this, is, this is her. So you can see what she looked like around about 1910, 1911. So that's Winnie. Um, she moved to New York uh, around about 1908, 1909, um, and worked there for a couple of years as a maid. And she worked um, as a servant for uh, very affluent families. So she was held in very high regard amongst the kind of the, the service folks. She was seen as, you know, the best. Um, so she worked for very, very prominent, very affluent families and made a good, a good living for... Um, for that type of role. I mean, she certainly wasn't wealthy by any means. But as those um, those menial roles went, it, she was she was doing all right. Um, she returned home in 1911, uh, which was Somerset, Devon, and um, had planned on not returning to New York. But her sister, um, who was in New York, gave birth in March of 20... Uh, sorry, 2012. March 1912. Uh, so it was decided, she was struggling, she was having a hard time, so it was decided that uh, Winnie, who had experience of both other people's children, she had no children of her own, but also of America, it was decided that Winnie would go and stay with her and help with the baby. Um, so she booked herself a ticket, I don't know what you're thinking, I don't know what she booked a ticket for. No, she didn't. She didn't book a ticket for Titanic, she booked a ticket for the um, the Olympic. So she booked a ticket for the Olympic to take her to um, New York. However, um, she was transferred to Titanic, which was seen as an upgrade. Lucky you get to on the, uh, the the luxurious new ship, the Titanic. Wow! So she was she was transferred from the Olympic to the Titanic, um, and her ticket cost ten pounds, uh, which was a lot of money back then. A hell of a lot of money. Uh, but she had a, a, a ten pound ticket, which was depending on which way you look at it, the highest part of third class or the very lowest part of second class is where she was. So it gives you an idea of of what sort of accommodation she had, and she was sharing with two other women. Um, so they had a uh, a bunk in their room and a uh, a couch, and the couch would fold out into a bed, and that was what Winnie slept on. She didn't take one of the bunks. She was travelling with two women. She didn't know. Um, but that's, uh, that's where she was. Now, one of the women she was with was, uh, an Irish lady. And you know how I feel about superstition, but we'll, we'll pay credence to it. Uh, the Irish lady that was sharing her cabin with her claims that when she was bored in the boat, she dropped her rosary. That the second she stepped foot on the boat, she dropped her rosary. She'll never drop her rosary. The second she stepped foot on the boat, dropped the rosary. And she saw that as a warning, as something ominous, as an omen. Uh, and Winnie testifies to this that this this Irish lady was convinced they were doomed that the boat was going to sink she was right um but I know there's again there's this whole thing well she was right there must be something in it not really I mean because how many people have been on boats or planes that they were convinced were going down and never did you know it, it's statistically one of them's going to be right one day aren't they so she was very superstitious about it there was also an elderly lady that was sending the the um uh the bunk room with them so on the night of the uh, the collision with the iceberg, when he was uh, asleep and woke up, she heard the collision and um, went to see what it was. Um, inquisitive, she was like, let's go find out what it is. So she goes up on deck to see and she realises the chaos. She hears that we've hit an iceberg um, and that everybody's putting their life jackets on and, and Winnie was intelligent. She was um, and pretty much knew what was going to happen. So she went back down to her cabin and she told the two other ladies, the Irish lady and the other lady, ladies, it's time to go. And she said to them, I fear we may be heading for a watery grave and this will be the last time we see each other. Winnie had a life of service and had that mindset where I need, I need to serve, almost to the point where she'd condemned herself to death that she wasn't going to attempt a lifeboat. She was going to help others. She was going to serve others up until the end. 
and had no intention of trying to board a lifeboat, which is remarkable. I mean, it's a very strange, for me, it's a very strange way of looking at things, but it's what she did. And there are numerous stories of this on the Titanic, of people that immediately just thought, okay, well, I'm not getting off this boat, and then acted very heroically. I mean, their heroes come in all different shapes and sizes. It's not just, you know, light on a dive from the, the top of the boat. It, I mean, there are there were very heroic acts that were very minor acts, but heroic. Even the band playing to the end is is heroic. It's brave. They did something. They did something good, and she did as well. So she went back and she told the two ladies, "Put your overcoats on, put your life jacket on. We're leaving." The elderly lady. I was like, oh, well, I can't go without my, um, I can't go up on board like this. So she attempted to put a corset on. When he grabbed the corset off her and threw it down the corridor and said, you got no time. Put your jacket on. Put, put your overcoat on. We're going. And I love that attitude. I'm, I'm of that attitude where it's like, we are leaving. So just grabbed it. We're not messing around with that. Get your stuff. We're going now. And um, she, she, uh, she did the right thing. Um, I'm happy to tell you that all three of the women in um, uh, Winnie's uh, bunk lived, including Winnie. So how did that happen? So Winnie gets up on deck and she is just helping other people into lifeboats. That's what she's doing. She's assisting people into lifeboats. She's making herself useful. She's being a good servant. That's what she's doing. With no intention at all of getting in a lifeboat. She makes no effort to get into a lifeboat. She sees, I think, it's three or four boats launch. She's not going to get in one. Which is, again, remarkable. It's not until a gentleman approaches her carrying a baby. And he says, you must take this baby. And she says, I'm not, I'm not taking a baby. And he said, the baby's been separated from its mother. Um, it needs to go on a lifeboat. So when he reluctantly takes the baby, she takes the baby to the lifeboat, starts asking who's going to take responsibility for this baby. Nobody would. Um... So Winnie got in the boat, got in the lifeboat with the baby. Now, there's some dispute about which boat Winnie was in. No one really knows for sure. There, There is... Some people said it was boat number three. Some people said it was boat number 11. No one really knows. There's no... We don't know. We don't know what lifeboat she, she was in. But she went with the baby. So Winnie is now carrying a baby that isn't hers in a lifeboat heading for the Carpathia. And... Um, she survived. Now, she made it to the Carpathia explained this is not my baby the baby was taken away from her she didn't know what happened she never knew what happened to the baby so we don't we at that point didn't know was the mother on board was the uh, i don't know but she can't just keep a baby it's it's not hers so she didn't know what happened she didn't know if the baby was reunited with its mother or, or not and it wasn't for 60 years until when he found out so when he went on the um uh, the Tonight Show um, on CBS, which is an American talk show, and told her story. And Winnie would tell the story a lot. I mean, this was kind of this was one of the the um, the big ones. I mean, of all the people that survived the Titanic for like the seventies and the eighties, this was the story. She could tell you this very harrowing ordeal of you know, and I took a baby and blah blah blah, and it's you know, it's a big deal. Um, and it wasn't that did some research into. The baby, uh, what babies were in lifeboats, they were able to do that, um, was the baby reunited with its mother. And I'm happy to tell you, the baby was. The baby's name was Assad, and he was reunited with his mother that had got separated from the baby. Um, and um, baby lived, mother lived, Winnie lived. So not all stories of the Titanic are doom and gloom. She did save that baby's life. She did manage to get a baby to the Carpathia where it's reunited with its mother. Um... And what what a uh, what an absolute champion she was. We did the circuit for years, right? So she she did a lot of the the talk show. She did a lot of books. She she was uh, she helped with um, film production and things like that. Um, and fair play to her. Uh, she did live to the ripe old age of one hundred. Now, Winnie for the longest time claimed she was the oldest survivor of the Titanic. Something she was very proud of. However, about two years before she died, it was discovered that Winnie wasn't the oldest survivor of the Titanic. Uh, there was a woman that had four years on her. Um, we'll come to her another day, but she lived to the age of 104. However, no one told Winnie. So even though it was verified that Winnie wasn't the oldest Titanic passenger in the world, no one told her. So Winnie went to her grave in 1984 at the age of 100, believing 
she was the oldest survivor of the Titanic. Made her very happy. She's very proud of that. Um, but this was Winnie in her, her final year. So there she is. And she died at 100 years old. Um, now, that was 1984. And this is why I believe this is relevant. Those of you that, that saw my story about the amusement ride that was based on Titanic and my standpoint that this is sick. There are families of these people. This is what I'm saying. There were some... Um, Everybody on the Titanic was a victim of the Titanic. Whether you lived or died, you were a victim of what happened on the Titanic. Um, <clears throat> and nobody walked away from that unscathed. Which beautifully illustrates my point um, that there are relatives of those people still around now that probably don't want to see their uh, their relatives portrayed as, a, as an amusement attraction. Um, because even though we hear... I mean, the, the Titanic was now... It was 111... It'll be 111 years in April since the Titanic sank. So this April will be the 111th anniversary of the sinking of the Titanic, um, which makes it ancient history. It's over 100 years old. It's regarded as ancient history at this point. Um, but it's not that many generations ago. If you think about it, it's not. I mean, let's look at the baby on the Titanic. The baby on the Titanic, 1912, that baby was born. Um, so if that baby lived to 100, it didn't. But if that baby lived to 100, that baby would have been, you know... 2012 that people lived to um but that means that 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 baby's grandchildren be around about my age so it's not it's not that hard to believe that there are people that would be deeply affected by seeing their their family's memories solid as part of an amusement attraction no um so it is strange because we see it as ancient history and there are no survivors of the titanic left now it's it's no it's that old but um, there are definitely children of Titanic victims and survivors left in the world. And there are definitely grandchildren um, and nieces and nephews. And they're still around, you know. Um, so I think, we should, I think we should treat it with respect. Which is why I don't like films like the horror movie we saw that, that portrays the passengers as like demons and things like that. These are real people. And it, it's hard to... Sometimes it's hard because all the myth that goes to the Titanic. But... Those were very real souls on board that boat. That's all for this one. Uh, we will be back very soon for issue 42. And another Titanic story. We'll be going to the movies. We'll be watching SOS Titanic. That's SOS Titanic. And you know what? It wasn't bad. We'll talk all about it. That's it for now. In a world where you can be anything at all, just be nice. Please remember to like and subscribe. And you can contact me, Scott, at buildingwiththeboys at outlook.com. Love to hear from you. Any queries, questions, or, or anything you'd like, you'd like to show us, please feel free to. We will catch you on the next one.